al shura the poets. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Ta sin mean. Allah is benign, all hearing and all knowing. These are the verses of the perfect book, which tells the right from the wrong, and which also makes the meaning and significance of the verses clear. Perhaps you will consume yourself away with anxiety because they do not become believers. If we so please, we can send down upon them such a sign from above that their necks would bend and heads bow down in submission to it. There never comes to them a fresh reminder in a form new and with new details from the most gracious God, but they turn away from it. Now when they have cried lies to the messages of their Lord and denied the Qur'an, there will soon come to them the great tidings about their own doom and predominance of Islam, which they used to take lightly. Do they not see the earth? How many excellent and useful things of all species we have caused to grow on it? Indeed, there is a sign in this, yet most of them would not believe. And your Lord, of course, he is the Almighty, the Ever-Merciful. And recall the time when your Lord called to Moses, directing him, Go to the wrongdoing people, the people of Pharaoh, and say to them, Will they not guard against evil? Moses said, My Lord, I am afraid they will cry me lies. And my bosom straightens, and my heart fails me, and my tongue is not fluent for feeling inadequate to deliver the message I am entrusted with. Therefore, send to Aaron to help me. Moreover, they have a charge of, of the murder of an Egyptian against me, so I fear they will kill me before I am able to deliver your message to them. The Lord said, That shall not be. Go then, both of you, with our messages, and we are assuredly with you listening to your prayers. Go to Pharaoh both of you, and say, We are bearers of a message from the Lord of the worlds, who commands you to send the children of Israel with us. So when Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh, he said to Moses, Did we not bring you up among us when you were a mere babe, and you stayed with us many years of your life? And you have surely committed an act, and you are of the ungrateful. Moses said, Indeed I did it, and as I was lost for the love of my people and was in a perplexed state of mind, so I fled from you when I apprehended injustice from you. Then it came to pass that my Lord granted me knowledge and right judgment and made me one of the messengers. And this insignificant favor of your bringing me up that you so tauntingly remind me of can be no reasonable excuse, for you have enslaved the whole community of the children of Israel for no fault of theirs. Pharaoh was confounded, and turning the topic of the conversation said, What is this Lord of the world by whom you claim to be sent? Moses said, He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and of all that lies between the two if you and your companions be convinced of this true knowledge and have faith in him. Thereupon Pharaoh said to those around him, Do you not hear what is being said? Moses continued, He is the same who is your Lord and the Lord of your fathers of yore. Pharaoh said, Most surely this messenger of yours who has been sent to you is a madman indeed. Moses said, continuing his speech, in respect of time, the Lord of the worlds is the same as the Lord of the east and of the west, and of all that lies between the two. You can be rightly guided if you could only use your senses. Pharaoh said, If you worship any god other than me, I will certainly make you one of the imprisoned. Moses said, Will you do this even though I bring to you something that makes the truth of my statement clear to you? Pharaoh said, Bring it then, if you are of the truthful. 
So he put his staff on the ground, and behold, it was a serpent plainly visible. And he stuck his hand out, and lo, it was shining white to the beholders. Pharaoh said to his courtiers around him, This man is surely a skilled sorcerer who seeks to turn you out of your country by dint of his sorcery. Now what do you advise? They said, Detain him and his brother for a while, and send heralds into the cities to collect, and bring to you all skilled and very expert sorcerers. So the sorcerers were gathered together at the appointed time and place on a fixed day. And it was said to the people, Will you also assemble together in the field of contest? So that we may follow the sorcerers if they win clear supremacy. So when all the sorcerers came, they said to Pharaoh, Shall we be really richly rewarded if we gain clear supremacy? He said, Yes, and surely you will in that case be among my close companions. Moses said to them, now put forward of your things of sorcery, what you have to put forward. So they put down on the ground their ropes and their staffs, and said, By Pharaoh's honor and might, it is we who will certainly be the winners. When Moses put down on the ground his staff, lo, it instantly destroyed all that they had fabricated. Thereupon the sorcerers were impelled to fall down prostrating. And they said, We believe in the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of Moses and Aaron. Pharaoh said, Have you believed in him before I gave you leave? Indeed, he is your chief, the same who taught you sorcery. So you will know your horrible end. I will most surely cut off your hands and your feet on alternate sides, for you're this opposition to me. And I will crucify you to death, one and all. They said, It does not matter at all. We have, after all, to return to our Lord. We do hope that our Lord will forgive us our offenses, since we are the first to believe. And we revealed to Moses, directing him, Take away my servants by night, for you shall certainly be pursued. Pharaoh, when he came to know of the exodus, sent heralds to the towns to collect. These Israelites are indeed a despicable party, a few in number. Yet they have offended us by defying us and making good their escape. And we are, as compared to them, a united multitude, fully equipped and vigilant. So we made them leave the land of gardens and springs, as well as every place with treasures and every abode of honor. That is what we did for the wrongdoings, and we gave the like of these as a free gift to the children of Israel. And they, the host of Pharaoh, pursued them at sunrise. And when the two hosts sighted each other, the companions of Moses said, We are surely overtaken. Moses said, No, not at all. My Lord is with me. He will lead me out of the impasse and to safety. Then we revealed to Moses, saying, Strike the sea with your staff. And as he did, so it parted. And each part of the two hosts looked like a huge mound. And we caused the others, the pursuers, the people of Pharaoh, to draw near the same place. And we saved Moses and those who were with him altogether. Then we drowned the others. Behold, there is a marvelous sign in this episode, yet most of them would not be believers. And indeed, your Lord, he is the Almighty, the Ever-Merciful and narrate to them the important event of the life of Abraham. When he said to his sire and his people, What things are those which you worship? We worship idols and will remain constantly devoted to them, said they. Abraham said, 
Can they listen to you when you call on them? Or can they do you good or avert harm from you? They said, Nay, it is not so, but we found our fathers doing likewise. Abraham said, But have you ever considered what you have been worshipping? You and your fathers before you? They are all enemies to me. Different, however, is the case of the Lord of the world. He has created me, and it is he who will guide me to reach the goal, and who gives me food and drink, and who restores me to health through his grace and mercy whenever I am taken ill, and who will call me to death and then will raise me to life again and who I eagerly hope will protect me from the undesirable consequences of my faults on the day of requital. Abraham then turned to his Lord and said, My Lord, grant me strong and right judgment, and make me follow and join the righteous, and ordain for me a noble, true, and lasting reputation among posterity, and make me one of the heirs of the garden of great bliss and protect my sire, he is of course of the erring ones. And do not put me to shame and disgrace on the day when people will be resurrected, the day when wealth will not avail, nor sons be of any good. But he alone will be saved who comes to Allah with a sound and pure heart the day when paradise will be brought near to those who guard against evil, and Jehenna shall be unveiled and placed in full view to those wretched ones who had deviated from the right path, and who shall be asked, Where are your deities that you worship, apart from Allah? Can they come to your help or inflict punishment? Then they, the false deities, shall all be hurled headlong into the depths of it, again and again, and along with them all those wretched fellows who had deviated from the right path, and the supporters of Iblis, all together. They will say, disputing therein, among themselves, By Allah, we were certainly in manifest and deep error in holding you as equals with the Lord of the worlds. And none but those who cut off their ties with Allah led us astray, so that now we have none of the intercessors, nor any warm-hearted true friend. Could we have but another chance to return to the world, then we would surely become of the true believers. Verily there is a remarkable sign in this, yet most of the people would not be believers. And of course your Lord, he is the Almighty, the Ever-Merciful. The people of Noah cried lies to the messengers. Recall the time when their kinsman Noah said to them, Will you not guard against evil? Surely I am to you a messenger, faithful to my trust. So take Allah as a shield and obey me. And I ask no reward from you for it. My reward lies with the Lord of the worlds alone. So take Allah as a shield and obey me. They, the disbelievers, said, Shall we believe in you, whereas we see that only the people of a very low status follow you? He said, I have no knowledge what good deeds they did in the past that now they have the honor to accept the truth. It is only up to my Lord to call them to account, if you could but perceive. I cannot drive away the believers, thinking them to be of low status. I am but a plain warner. Noah, they said, if you do not desist, you shall be excommunicated or done away with. Noah said, praying, My Lord, my people have treated me as a liar. So judge between me and them a decisive judgment, and deliver me and the believers who are with me. So we delivered him and all those who were with him by means of the fully laden ark.
Then after that we drowned the remaining ones. Behold, there is a great sign in this episode, yet most of them would not be believers. And indeed, your Lord, he is the Almighty, the Ever-Merciful. The tribe of Odd too cried lies to the messenger sent to them. Recall the time when their kinsman Hood said to them, Will you not guard against evil? Surely I am to you a messenger, faithful to my trust. Therefore take Allah as a shield and obey me. I ask no reward from you for this. My reward lies only with the Lord of the worlds. What is wrong with you? You build a monument on every prominent place. In vain you do it. And you raise fortresses in the hope that you will abide till long. And when you lay hold on anyone, you do it like tyrants. You should take Allah as a shield and obey me. And take him as a shield who has helped you with all the favors and blessings that you know of. He has helped you with cattle and sons, and gardens and springs. Indeed, I fear lest the punishment of an awful day should befall you. They said, It makes no difference with us whether you admonish us or be not of the admonishers. This way of admonition is merely the manner of the ancients. And we are not at all going to be punished. Thus they cried lies, and we destroyed them. There is indeed a remarkable sign in this episode, yet most of them would not be believers. And in fact, your Lord, He is the Almighty and ever merciful. The tribe of Thamud too cried lies to the messengers. Recall the time when their kinsman Saleh said to them, Will you not guard against evil? Surely I am to you a messenger faithful to my trust. So take Allah as a shield and obey me. I ask no reward from you for this service I render. My reward lies with the Lord of the worlds alone. Do you think that you will be left in peace amidst all enjoyable things which you have here? Amidst gardens and springs? And cornfields and date palms having fine and heavy spades near breaking? And you hew out houses in the mountains with great skill and elated with your greatness. Take Allah as a shield and obey me. And do not obey the biddings of those who exceed the bounds. Who create disorder in the country and set not things in order. They said, you are merely one of those mortals who are dependent on being given food. You are nothing but a human being like ourselves. So bring us a sign if you are of the truthful. Saleh said, Here is a she-camel. She will have her share of water at the watercourse, while you will have your share of water at a time appointed for you. And you shall do her no harm. Otherwise the punishment of an awful day shall befall you. Notwithstanding all this warning, they hamstrung her, and then they became regretful. Consequently, the threatened punishment overtook them. Behold, there is a remarkably great sign in this episode, yet most of them would not be believers. And indeed, your Lord, He is the Almighty the ever-merciful. And the people of Lot cried lies to the messengers. Recall the time when their kinsman Lot said to them, Will you not guard against evil? Verily I am to you a messenger, faithful to my trust. So take Allah as a shield and obey me. And I ask no reward from you for this service I render. My reward lies with the Lord of the worlds alone. Is it not true that of all people you alone approach males for sexual satisfaction? 
and leave that abode of love which your Lord has created for you in your wives? Nay, the real fact is you are a people who know no limits. They said, If you desist not of admonishing us for sodomy, O Lot, you shall indeed be of the banished ones. He said, I surely abhor your practice. My Lord, save me and my followers from the evil consequences of their deeds. So we saved him and his followers, all of them, except an old woman, the wife of Lot, who was among those who stayed behind. Then we destroyed the others, and we pelted them with a terrible rain of stones. Look, how terrible was the rain that descended upon those who were warned. There is a great sign in this episode, yet most of them would not be believers. And indeed, your Lord, he is the Almighty, the Ever-Merciful. The dwellers of the wood in Midian cried lies to the messengers. Recall when Shuaib said to them, Will you not guard against evil? Indeed, I am to you a messenger faithful to my trust. Therefore, take Allah for your shield and obey me. And I ask no reward from you for it. Surely my reward lies with the Lord of the worlds alone. Give full measure and be not of those who give short, and weigh with even and balanced scales, and do not defraud people of their things, do not go about acting corruptly, creating disorder in the country. Take him who has created you and former generations as a shield. They said, you are simply of those who stand in need of being given food, and you are but a human being like ourselves. As a matter of fact, we believe you to be of the liars. So let a fragment of a cloud fall upon us by way of punishment if you are of the truthful. Shuaib thereupon said, My Lord knows best all that you do. Yet they cried him lies. So the punishment of the gloomy day, with dark overshadowing clouds, overtook them. It was indeed the punishment of an awful day. Behold, there is a great sign in this episode, yet most of them would not be believers. Though in fact, your Lord, he is the Almighty and ever merciful. And verily, this Quran is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. The spirit, faithful to the trust, has descended with it, revealing it to your heart with the result that you became one of the warners. The Qur'an has been revealed in plain and clear Arabic language. Verily, it finds mention in the scriptures of the earlier peoples. Is it not a sufficient proof for them that the learned among the children of Israel recognize it? And if we had revealed it to one of the non-Arabs, and he had recited this eloquent word of God in Arabic to them, even then they would never have believed in it. That is how we cause it to take root in the hearts of those who cut off their ties with God, that they will not believe in it until they see the grievous punishment. So this punishment will come upon them all of a sudden, taking them unaware while they do not perceive and calculate it. They will say then, Shall we be given some respite? Is that why they seek to expedite our punishment? Do they not see that even if we let them enjoy worldly bounties for some more years, and then that punishment with which they are threatened befalls them, that respite which they were allowed to enjoy will be of no avail to them? And never did we destroy any people of a township, but it had its warners, so that they may be admonished, and we are never unjust. It was not the evil ones who have brought this Qur'an down. It does neither suit them, nor have they the power to reveal it. In fact, the evil ones are precluded from listening to the divine revelation. 
Therefore call on no god beside Allah, for if you do, you will become of those who are severely punished. And Prophet, warn your nearest kinsmen, and be gentle and affectionate to the believers who follow you. But if they, your kinsmen, disobey you, say to them, Surely I am not responsible for what you do. And put your trust in the Almighty, the ever-merciful God, who sees you at the time when you stand up in prayer, and also for calling the people to the right path and who sees your moving about among those companions who prostrate themselves before the Almighty Lord. Verily, he is the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Shall I tell you to whom the evil ones appear? They appear to every habitual and hardened liar and great sinner, who listen eagerly to what the evil ones say, yet mostly they tell them lies. And as for the poets, it is the erring ones who follow them. Do you not see how they wander distracted in every valley? And they say such things which they do not practice themselves? Except those poets who believe and do deeds of righteousness, and who mention the greatness of Allah over and over again, and who retaliate and defend themselves only after they are done injustice to. Behold, those who acted unjustly will soon know to what a wretched end they are heading for.